All right, welcome back. We continue. Bob Pompiani, Chris Mother with you. We've got a lot of tweets on this topic here tonight. And Dario Tiger says, watch out for DJ. Shows me a picture of Dustin Johnson, another guy who you would expect. He's at the top of his game, Chris. But what about that shot by John Rahm yesterday? And the fact that he pretty much planned it to go that way, you never expect it to go in the hole, but it did. Well, one, I'm always amazed that those guys are able, who are so good at striking the ball so purely, are able during this practice round to actually hit it such that they can get it to skip over the water. However, I must point out that he is the second man in the era of cell phone cameras to do this successfully. The pin was tougher for Rom. Vijay Singh, who people really didn't like that much, pulled it off in 2009, and he did it. I, this is the thing I can't imagine about Vijay's. He did it much the same. You know, he skips it up and on, and then it just happens to roll down at the perfect angle into the hole. He did it in front of spectators. Can you imagine how blown up your mind would be if you actually saw a pro skip a ball across water and have it go in the hole for a hole-in-one? Most of us would kill for one hole-in-one in our lifetimes, and these guys are good enough and lucky enough to do that. It's pretty amazing. It is, and I remember that from VJ. It was, that was before a lot of this stuff was available on Twitter and social media, but this one has, has certainly caught fire. All right, 412-575-2600. Watch out for Tiger Woods, too. Not that I would project him to be a winner, but I didn't think that last year as well. If he wins, he will break the tie that he holds right now with Sam Snead most wins ever in the history of the game, and it would be 84 for him. Let's go to Frank in Gibsonia. Hello, Frank. How are you today? Hello, Frank. Frank, are you there? Last chance. All right, let's go to Mark. Frank went on to YouTube. He, he wanted to watch that VJ clip that I was talking about. He, <laughs> he was enraptured. In. By the way, do you know who we haven't mentioned once in this, Bob, as far as a, a pick to maybe win? John uh, I haven't heard Brooks. I haven't heard Brooks Kepka's name one time. And that dude was the Terminator not that long ago. And I feel like people may be sleeping a little bit on his ability. I know he's been banged up, but uh, let's not forget that when that guy turns it on, even with Bryson hitting the crap out of the ball, Brooks Kepka is an absolute machine when he gets it going. Yeah, and if you look at the majors over the past eight of them and uh, under par total cumulative score of all those events, it's Brooks Kepka all alone by 30 over Dustin Johnson, who's next. So, I mean, he has been terrific in major championships. We'll see. Mark and Carrick joins us right now on the Board of Some Board of Hotline. Hey, Mark. Well, hey, how many more games do the Steelers have to win to clinch at least a wild card spot, you think? Well, they may already have that. I don't, you know, I mean, the worst they can go is eight and eight if they lost eight in a row. But, you know, I, first of all, I don't even know if they're going to get to the finish line based on what we've seen. They've come up with a contingency, contingency plan. But, you know, two wins, if they get to 10, there's no, there's no way they're going to miss it with an extra playoff team in there. That shouldn't even matter to them. They, they should strive to be the number one seed. And while I know they're eight, no, they may not be the best team, but they keep winning. And, Chris, ultimately, that's what matters most. And somehow, some way, even when they play some of their worst football, they still come out on top. Yeah, that seems to be the difference this year uh, versus previous seasons, especially this Dallas game. We usually chalk it up as one bad Mike Tomlin loss they always get called. I would call it Tomlin and Roethlisberger losses because poor play from the quarterback and poor coaching from the head coach tend to go hand in hand in these situations, but they're managing to win these games. Uh, I would also say, I actually was randomly looking at it, I would say if they win two more games, uh, they're pretty much locked in and ready to go. And this should put people's minds at ease, or it should put Mark's mind at ease right there, right? No team since 1990, when the playoff field expanded to, uh, to six in each conference, 12 teams overall, not one team has started 8-0 and and failed to make the playoffs. So the Steelers are as much of a mortal lock at this point as you could possibly be. Yeah, and when you look at it realistically, they're favored this week. They'll be favored again next week, although Jacksonville always makes you wonder. They should be 10-0 and heading into their game against the Ravens. So what makes that interesting is that the Ravens, while Pittsburgh takes on Jacksonville, the Ravens have a tough game against Tennessee on short week, and they got to travel to Pittsburgh. I don't know what that means, if anything, but it should mean advantage Pittsburgh, and we'll see how it goes. I think we have Frank back now, Chris. Let's go to Frank in Gibsonia. Frank, what did you do? Did you go look for what Chris was talking about, 2009? Oh, I don't know, Bob. I mean, that was a hell of a shot by DJ, but I don't know if I was able to – I just couldn't get on there, but I, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. We got you. All righty. Yeah, so about Rory, I think uh, your pick, like you for your pick, I think – I think it's the problem with him is just a lack of confidence. I watched his press conference today, and it just doesn't seem like he's really, you know, feeling himself too much. Uh, 
with Bryson, I think not enough people are recognizing his putting ability. I think what he can do on, on the greens is actually extraordinary. And another thing about Bryson is that he really believes he's changing lives with what he's doing, and I like I, it's just remarkable to see that. And lastly, a question: Do you think if Tiger makes the cut, is it a successful weekend? Thanks, guys. All right. Well, for him, no. He, his goal is never to just make a cut. Although you have to think about where he is in his career, he's not played all that much recently. Uh, the last time we saw him was not a very good showing, but I'll, I'll take you back to 2018, Chris. He was playing in the Tour Championship, and not many people thought he'd win that thing, and he played some of his best golf, and I think that catapulted him into 2019 and his April win in the Masters. Well, he doesn't play much but the big tournaments, it seems, so I don't think making the cut would be a successful weekend for him. He mm-hmm. minimizes his schedule, I think, to try to gear up for this, so no, I think he wants to win uh, for obvious reasons. He's the defending champ. As far as Bryson, I'll say this much. Uh, the guy is full commit to what he's doing. I don't like him because he plays too slow, and I am a psycho about quick play, mainly because I stink, so I'd like to at least stink and play fast. Uh, but Get to the 19th hole, him credit. Baby. Get to the 19th hole. I, uh, <laughs> right, exactly. That's been my strategy since really I, uh, I started playing, or at least since I turned 21. <laughs> Uh, but Bryson's fully committed, man, and I do think what he, what he is doing, if it continues to work, I will say this, a lot of people don't like him, and a lot of his fellow tour pros don't like him, but they're trying to copy him like Rory is. It could be revolutionary if he keeps winning, and he is a great putter. As for Rory, my quick statement there, you know what seems to be sort of his problem at times? It might be confidence, but he seems like a pretty well-rounded dude who's like a deep thinker, and I wonder if the killer instinct is there like it might have been earlier in his career. I think he, he's realizing at this point that golf isn't the be-all, end-all. And as much as that's like a healthy way to look at life, it might not be the best thing in a a field with a bunch of people who are single-minded robots when you're trying to win majors. One thing I'll say about Rory, uh, he blew up that one time in the Masters where he could have won the thing, but in his last four Masters, he's minus four on the front nine, he's minus 21 on the back nine. He seems to play his best golf on the back nine, and... You're going to need to do that on Saturday and Sunday, so we'll see. I mean, it's, you can make a, a prediction about 20 guys who can win this thing. That's how evenly matched this thing is, but it's going to be fascinating to watch as we watch Bryson DeChambeau. All right, let's go to Steve in the north side. Steve, welcome to the Sports Call. How are you? Hey, good. Uh, Bob, Chris, what's up, my family? Hey, listen, uh, about the Masters tomorrow, uh, some good tea times coming up early in the morning. I know they're starting early uh, mm-hmm. due to, the, you know, uh, lack of sunshine. Time, but... Um, uh, yeah, uh, Justin Thomas, I know you mentioned that, Chris. Uh, he's playing, uh, I think he's seen off with Brooks Kepler, who you also mentioned. Uh, my pick um, is Dustin Johnson, and uh, I know he's seen off with Rory as well. So I think that's some good tee-up matchups. My pick is Dustin Johnson. Hopefully right. he don't Not a bad uh, pick. Fall- that's a good pick, as a matter of fact. A lot of people would have put money on him. Here, I'm going to ask you for a long shot, Chris, before we go to break, because mine is going to be Paul Casey, who has a history of playing pretty well down there. He's in his 40s now. So, you know, every now and then you're going to get a guy who comes out of nowhere. Jack won at age 46. We saw Watson almost win the Open Championship at age 60. But I'm looking at Paul Casey as a veteran who knows that golf course pretty well. How about a long shot for you? I think my dad is still bummed that Watson left that winning putt short against Stuart mm. Sink in regulation and uh, bombed one over on 18 to put himself in a predicament. Uh, but I, you know what? I, the guy is not a, an old guy or not an, you know, I shouldn't say old, but an over 40 guy. He's one of the younger players, but I don't think it gets mentioned nearly as much as some of the big time luminaries. How about Xander Shoffley? Mm-hmm. Not really a long shot per se, but he's not one of those names that we always mention when we're talking about guys who will contend and possibly win at majors. That's my pick. Yeah, he reminds me a lot in the day when Mike Weir was playing his good golf and he came out of nowhere as one of the shorter hitters on the tour and he, you know, he played his wedge game beautifully to win his green jacket uh, as Tiger Woods had it presented to him. So that's, you never know. You play the game because you play the game and the greens are going to determine this. We're going to take a break, come back with more. Chris and I will talk football, Steelers, and other things when we come back. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. We invite you to join us at 575-2600, area code 412.